All right, I'm going to keep trying until I get this right. The last two tries, I ended up talking for like a half an hour. So if it gets to be too long, just raise your hand and I'll see it and I'll stop talking. So this is my Tales of the Jedi. Um, Ulick and K. Keldrama. That's how I've always thought to pronounce them. If it's wrong, sorry. But um, the Tales of the Jedi comic series came out in like the mid-90s. And it was one of my first exposures to... The Star Wars universe that totally wasn't the original trilogy. And I'm pretty sure anybody else that read this series kind of is of the same impression. But it took you so far away from the original trilogy that it's just, it feels like an almost different universe entirely. But um, I still love these, and these are the original ones that I have from the 90s. And they're old, they're beat up, but damn, I love them. So, yeah, I it, again, it's always something that I had wanted. The lightsaber designs in particular were just so different than your Groflex and your MPPs. And they had spiky bits, they were greebled up to the heavens, and they were just so interesting to look at, even though from panel to panel they don't make any sense. Even in the same panel, it's <laughs> they don't make sense. And they're not consistent, and they change radically throughout the series, but at the same time, because they're so interesting to look at, I kind of have a, a very specific soft spot, and if anything, a very high affection for it, so. Silver Star. So yeah, Prism 5.5, um, it's utilizing some of the cool stuff like the rain sizzle and the fire, and that's the hand gestures for those two things, by the way. Um, but yeah, this is uh, set to a kind of a Mountain Dewy green, and I know I've mentioned the Mountain Dew before, Anytime talking about like Tales of the Jedi and stuff, but this is obviously the Tales of the Jedi one, so obviously I'm gonna be saying Mountain Dew stuff, but um, um the AccuBolt shows up so well, but again, better in the reflection on my Ottoman. I thought it was funny. Um, I just went with basic colors and stuff. This, the Mountain Dew there, and then the series they have either greenish or they have blue, like. In this book, they're all green. In this book, they're all blue, minus one or two, but they don't really vary all that much from Jedi to Jedi, mostly from story to story, but um, Exar Kun is a little bit more associated with the blue, and like the Keldrama brothers are more the greeny Mountain Dew stuff, but um, either way, I put both of those in there. Um, and of course a red, just because a hilt this ostentatious has to have a red in there somewhere, but... Um, yeah, the construction, um, it was, it's pretty straightforward. It was pretty much the exact same techniques that I used for the Minas Tirith, Minas Morgul, and the Tron. is the, the layered shrouds and stuff to build up stuff and um, use the Graflex red button. I love that just because a long time ago I saw a lightsaber building contest. Again, late, late 90s, that's how long ago. But um, there was a guy that made a Tales of the Jedi and used a big red button, so in my mind, I've always associated with that hilt with a big red button. But again, it's kind of a contemporary throwback to what would ordinarily be an ancient piece. But um, I had to put a little door right here, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to route wires underneath all this stuff, underneath the spike here, into the body, because the, the blade holder stops, like, right around here. And how else am I going to get under it? So I kind of had to be a little bit creative with that. Uh, epoxy putties, epoxy pastes and stuff, the PC-7, some um, plumber's epoxy, JB Weld. Um, the cool thing about like stuff that's designed for metal is that it's got the metal infused flakes or powders and stuff so that you can actually PC it. And one of the things that I thought was really cool is that when I PC this all white to begin with, um, it's sort of cured the epoxy and hardened it but at the same time it still gave it left it with this chaotic pattern that I, I you know i didn't make it fully smooth when i sanded it because i knew that it was gonna be painted and weathered and stuff like that so i didn't really feel like going all in but either way it was able to grab a whole bunch of the acrylic paint and stuff which um also went into this i didn't just all use powder coating and stuff this time but um after i did that i hit it with a clear coat and then an acrylic wash and then another clear coat and another acrylic wash, and I basically just built it up so that you can see all the panel lines, which are um, uh, 
copper foil tape, aluminum foil tape and stuff. Sometimes just a single layer, but um, the metallic tape so that you could power coat again over it. But um, I had to use like the, the acrylics in order to get in between everything in order to get that stuff to sort of appear and to look cool. And it was partially inspired by Star Destroyers and Star Destroyer models, but um, yeah, that's that's how I did that. There's a exhaust port. Don't ask me why there's an exhaust port, but hey, it works. <laughs> so we're gonna go with it. Nightfall. That's uh, another one of my favorite ones. Jedi Knight Two Outcast. That was Jedi Knight Two Outcast. Um, still get some good use out of that. So thanks, Dave. Rain sizzle. Oh yeah, rain sizzle. Not too much that I need to say about this other than the fact that it's really awesome. Um, I believe this concept started with the Tartakovsky Clone Wars shorts. It was uh, Anakin and Massage Ventress fighting on Yavin, standing outside, just sort of facing off, but it starts raining. And it's a, just a really cool moment. And um, I believe some of the rain sounds are pulled from that directly, but um, I left it with the... Uh, the slower retraction because it sort of works alongside the uh, the fading audio and stuff like that. And again, I, th I think it works really well. Ancient Saber. All right, Ancient Saber. The reason why I have Ancient Saber in here is because it's a freaking ancient lightsaber. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. And coupled with the um, the green flame effect, um, some of the comic stuff. It looks like the way they drew it, that the, they're on fire, or um, the halo is just so chaotic that like maybe there's stuff coming off of it or whatever. But again, going back to my past, that's one of those things that has sort of left me with as far as like an impression of an ancient lightsaber is that the halos are going to be so out there that they kind of look like they're on fire. So I went with the green fire. And again, well, it's kind of hard to see with the uh, washing out, but it works amazingly well, in my opinion. And even with the uh, orange clash on flash and stuff, the, uh, the comics even address that a little bit too, so that, you know, there's some oranges mixed in there, and I mean, there's white for the Acubolt, but again, I'm going with what my brain remembers from the comics. <laughs> I like that little flare it gives right before it completely goes and it's got that high pitched part of the power off sound and again it's just it works so well. And lastly, of course you got to have the phoenix pyre um, with the fire effect. And really, I, I'm pretty sure that's about as perfect as you can get as far as a flame effect on a lightsaber or sword or whatever, but... Yeah. Not too much to say about that other than it's awesome. So, yeah, that's... Um my Tales of the Jedi lightsaber. I'm, I left out a whole bunch of other stuff, like deliberately, otherwise I would have talked forever. But um, yeah, hope you like it, and um, I'm gonna hold on to this one for a while. So thanks for watching, I'll see you later.